I just want to welcome everybody to the Engage Truth Show. We have a special episode today. I have with me again, Dr. Mark Armitage. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I dragged a couple of friends with me tonight. I noticed, and I'm (laughs) really excited about this. I'm excited to have both of you, if you want to introduce them. Yeah, this is my wonderful wife and right-hand man, Girl Friday, Ruth. Uh, I couldn't do this work without her. She's my rock. uh, more than that, she she provides uh, a lot of direction. Uh, we're we're the, actually the three founders of Distry, so mm-hmm. this it's kind of a unique situation. This is Keith Holcomb. He lives in Dallas, here in Texas, and uh, works for American Airlines. I'll let him tell you about his career, but he's a steady, steady hand at the tiller mm-hmm. of of our group. And uh, I just thought it'd be a neat opportunity to have the three founders of Distry, since we're all together in El Paso to come on and share our hearts with you. So yeah, well, thank it, you for letting us come. Absolutely. It's a blessing having you guys here. And um, those of our who are listening and watching the show, it's uh, DISTRI stands for Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's, 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 it's so excellent because it's encapsulating um, the goal and we can talk some more about that. But I would like to hear uh, just a little bit about um, Keith and Ruth and your story of um, what gets you excited about the distri vision? Hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Start Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Put on the spot. <laughs> uh, well, I I grew up as in India as a Mish kid. Really? Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, and spent a lot of time in India and Afghanistan and um, other cultures. Um, but when I met Mark. His, he's uh, worked so much in biology and he explains it so well yeah. that it just opened really a whole new world for me. And of course then now we're focusing with the dinosaur soft tissue and it just yeah. blew me away. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's exciting to be a part of this. It's exciting to see the kids mm-hmm. just you know that wow moment mm-hmm. so yeah it's powerful juju you know i mean what kid doesn't know about dinosaurs mm-hmm. um, you can go to central africa and kids with dinosaur t-shirts are running around so it's yeah. gone around the world and and when you combine the concept of that dinosaur image that's been burned into their psyche with the concept uh, along with deep time mm-hmm. With the concept of soft tissue, it causes a disconnect. So it's really neat to be able to share that with people and kind of jar them into thinking about this. Not many people realize how much dinosaur soft tissue is out there. Yeah, Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. And well, thanks for sharing, Ruth. And it's been a joy getting to know you. And um, just as we were doing lab training last night, this this week actually, we are getting ready. Uh, when you see this video, you guys, it'll probably have passed this week. And, yeah. um, but we have near, at this point, near 100 students who'll be participating in labs Wednesday and Friday of this week. And then we had 80 on Sunday night, didn't yeah. we? Well, there totally... It was a large crowd. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the number exactly, yeah. but yeah. Um, it was kind of like a pre-lab and, and some people just um, hearing about your research. And so Ruth is very patient in helping me understand how to work yeah. the microscope. Yeah. Scope, yeah. but also yeah. um, so I can help the kids out as well Amen. without our lab yeah. training and yeah. so no doubt this is really strengthen your faith right and oh. <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, well I mean it, it helps give an answer for yeah. your mm-hmm. for your hope mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. well um, you're a valuable part of history and I know Mark attests and Keith would attest to that as well yeah, so yeah. Keith what's part of your story of getting plugged in with history I know we were visiting about it earlier today uh, well, I was lost many years after mm. leaving home at high school, and uh, age 47 I got saved, and a year later I got introduced to uh, creation science and uh, just consumed it, just like the Bible, for about <laughs> eight years. Got bored and decided to be, I wanted to be involved, so I contacted Mark and had lunch with him uh, in Seattle mm-hmm. one day, and uh, from then I just Moved kind of slow, but uh, finally decided to help start the nonprofit to uh, uh, help him continue this work and publish the books and mm-hmm. get this information out to the people that need it, the, the lost lambs out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, this recent lab uh, 
thing is, is really exciting because it's children training the, the yeah. young ones mm -hmm. that uh, need to hear the truth and, mm -hmm. and to know that they can trust God's Word. Amen. Yeah. So would you say for you it was a big turning point being exposed to creation science for you coming to faith or was that kind of after no, you came to faith? No, that was after, after okay. the faith. Sure. It was, yeah, the, uh, the Lord uh, opened my eyes to His reality without um, creation science. Hmm. But this, uh, but He also led me to creation science. Mm -hmm. It was really kind of an, a mistake that I stumbled across uh, ICR there in Dallas really? yeah. in 2010, um, and from that point it just it just strengthens my faith and and uh, uh, just points to his awesome supernatural creation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I I know every believer at, at some point has to decide what are we going to do with Genesis and um, what am I going to do about all the research that uh, we hear. About dinosaurs, and, well, I put it put it one way: everyone has to decide what they're going to do with dinosaurs right now. It's the big elephant in the room of all Christians. Of okay, we're finding soft tissue, we're finding um, nerves, and it's the elephant. Not really just for Christians, for everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone is shocked. Yeah. Uh, we we have so much fun on our travels because we give away books to just about everybody yeah. we meet. But just to strike up a conversation yeah. and say, "Have you heard about dinosaur soft mm -hmm. tissue?" And people they just look at you. <laughs> You're like, like what? What, what do you? What do yeah, you? What's going on? What with What is you? this strange yeah. language? You know. Uh, so it's a real neat opportunity yeah. to share. And I tell you, you can get to the gospel mm -hmm. in about sixty seconds. Yeah. Uh, and and it's just neat. We we've, we've met so many just lovely people. Just today, uh, when Ruth was standing in the Starbucks line, she made an acquaintance with a lovely lady who had to come running down into the auditorium at UTEP, even though she was late for a function that she was going to. She came down and just loved up on all of us because she got so excited. So yeah. it really is yeah. neat to see the reactions of average people when you share this with them. And uh, that that's really the fire in our engine, I think, is... is seeing people who are unaware of this uh, finally hear about it and think about it and realize, wow, the flood really was yeah. real. Mm -hmm. It really, really happened. And, yeah. and, you know, Second Peter 3, he talks about the coming judgment. And that's just as certain. Mm -hmm. That's what this tissue has done to me. It's, it has cemented the certainty of Christ and the certainty of end times in my mind. And, we're, we're driven now to go out and share this with as many people as we can because we don't want them lost. Yeah, I just want to say thank you on behalf of myself and all our listeners thank and you. all the children and the labs. Um, yeah, labs are fun, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. Yeah. I was saying earlier how I, I uh, it, it sunk in when I finally went home and I'm looking at here, um, this is one of one of your books, your newest yeah, books, yeah. Um, Old Stretchy and the Dinosaur Bone Cell. Yeah. And this picture here has an Anotyrannus nerve. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I saw that under the microscope. You did. And, yeah. um, it, and it, you struggled it a little bit. It was better than this picture, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I struggled a little bit. But that, that's normal. And so, you know, we encourage people just keep at it, keep at it. But yeah, when that nerve finally came into focus for you, you were a changed person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, and it's it's a great payoff. I mean, it's some work. Yeah. Um, of course, we saw osteocytes, mm -hmm. and these are supposed to be several hundred million years old. Well, the ones we looked at last night, certainly 68 to 75, okay, yeah. but the Permian stuff, yeah, 290 million years old, and the, the cells that we're finding in Dimetrodon and K-Cops and some of these things are fabulous. They're even better preserved, almost. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting. I've heard you say that multiple times this week. That, so you're saying a layer that's deeper is yeah. better preserved. Seems so, yeah. So, like, how does that work? Wow, I don't know. I mean, isn't that the great question? Yeah. Uh, it's that elephant in the room that you talked yeah. about. How can this be? I, I call them impossible pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trained as a soft tissue expert. That was actually my training. One time I actually processed jellyfish eyes. If you can imagine, I don't think tissue gets softer than jellyfish eyes, you know? <laughs> so uh, I had to learn to process these tissues at the university level. So when I read the journals, about soft tissue, I nearly fell off my chair because yeah. they were reciting the very protocols I was using in my own laboratory. So I had to go out and investigate this, but 
No, it shocks me every day when I start pulling nerves out of the now these Permian mm. fossils and they look better like the one you looked at last night. I pulled that out about four or five months ago. It's 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 degrading. You can see it degrading. If you thought it was pretty last night, you should have seen it four months ago. But no, the fact that yeah. these tissues are still there in their original conformation, and we can see that the tissues have a diagnostic crosshatch feature that we can search for. Nerves have that, every single nerve. So we know we're looking at nerves. How can they be there in a 290 million year old amphibian? Yeah, it's absolutely incredible seeing that. And we're gonna talk some about, again, the critiques, and we mentioned that in the mm -hmm. previous video. But before we get to that, I wanna stay on this, this issue of the Distri Labs, because yes. we are um, looking forward to that, and yeah. that's a, a very significant part of your vision yes. um, of, of the, the Research Institute. And, yes. um, and I think, I don't know how many this is of labs you've done at this point with Distri, but I think that we're still kind of in the early stages, is that right? Or? This is actually the maiden voyage as Distri okay. with our all our brand new equipment. We invested, well, about 40,000, I think, all told. Wow in this lab and and it occurred to us you know we had the mo same model that pretty much everybody else does build a building yeah. we're going to build a multi-story lab put technicians in it equipment you know everything and then it, it hit us we need to go out matthew 5 6 and 7 go out into the towns and villages take nothing for the journey let your spirit rest on the house that you enter i mean just concepts that were so foreign to us not so long ago are now really convicting us to mm. take this out into the towns and villages. There's nothing better than watching a 13 year old teach a PhD about dinosaur soft tissue. So if we can train all the 13 year olds, all the PhDs will come around. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really interesting. I, th I heard you mention that before of, well, we invest in the younger generation mm -hmm. and well, one, I think part of it is they're open to even looking at um, the soft tissue under the scopes. Yeah. Because I've seen some people who say, absolutely, I'm not going to go to right. Dr. Armitage's presentation. Yeah. I won't even read his stuff. Yeah. And, and I know you're aware of that. But, yes. and, but you said, I'm just going to keep sharing the truth. People make up their own mind. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's, there's no time for discouragement, especially yeah. when we're making world, world first discoveries yeah. world first, over and over and over. I think we now occupy the high ground. So mm. our job is to testify, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just going out to testify about what we know to be true and helping to liberate, hopefully, these minds that have been beaten down by deep time. Yeah. Deep time is a direct affront to the, to the gospel. It's a direct affront to the curse. If, if sin and death, or if death was always here before Adam said, all he had to do was turn to God and say, your curse is meaningless. Because mm. look at all the dead animals, Lord. So it, it minimizes the severity of the curse. And the, mm. the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. That death began on that day. And we've been marching. All of us are going over the waterfall. We're all going to die. Yeah. Mm. So that was cursed. That was the curse. But it also minimizes the sacrifice that Jesus made to pay the price of that curse. Yeah. Well, says so, death is an enemy. Yeah. Death is not right. the, the vessel of creation. No. First Corinthians 15 says death will be the final enemy defeated. Yeah. So even that theological point, mm -hmm. Ruth and Keith, is that something that, like, when was there a point where that clicked in for y'all? Um, or did it kind of come in at once? Or how did that work for y'all? I know you well, were affected. It, yeah. I mean, that was the, that was the big one for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I... Growing up as I did overseas, uh, I knew like all the Vedic writings, all you know, hmm. ancient Chinese writings, all talk about the flood, the worldwide flood. So that that time element, you know, that that was confirmed with the blood clots. Mm. The blood clots. Yeah, yes, there's there's One no doubt discovery. about that. But I did start thinking about okay. You know, they, they try to say that the dinosaurs were here before man. Um, but as Mark had pointed out, you know, that, that I think that's kind of one of the key pins of Satan's mm -hmm. impact. Yeah. Im Im modality, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that, the flood is such a 
a key in the whole discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But it's so, great. You know, you don't have to believe those things when the evidence is there. But I know you got stuff to say too. So chime in. Well, um, <laughs> I was questioning the time reality mm -hmm. before I was saved, but I wasn't looking to science to to prove it or something. Mm -hmm. But it was something that was that had disturbed me. You know, the Lord used it to, to kind of. Uh, stir me to search mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I was saved and then ran across creation science and it has just solidified my faith um, and actually the science now makes sense because of what's so obvious about yeah the yeah truth. I, it, yeah I, I appreciate you sharing that I think it's it it makes sense and and is is a real simple but profound truth because mm -hmm. we're we're not just saying, hey, let's just deal with this as it relates to evolution. We're saying we want you to understand how all of life makes sense mm -hmm. in light of the biblical worldview. Yes. It, yeah. It's a total truth. What I see many believers do is what Nancy Piercy talks about. It's called total. It's this two-story view of truth where um, science and objective truth is on one level. Um, and then subjective truth is on the second level. And that mm -hmm. applies personally. It doesn't apply mm -hmm. to everyone. And Nancy Piercy is saying it's this false separation. It should be total truth, mm -hmm. and that's again why I call my my show "Engaged Truth." Be much engaged with the total truth right. of the biblical worldview and the all all the implications of that. I love this quote here. Um, this is one I've been been talking about, and I think it relates well with your goal. And as we continue this discussion, it uh, Herman uh, Duwer. I hopefully I said that right. He says. All Christians who in their academic disciplines are ashamed of the name of Christ, Jesus, because they desire honor among people, will be totally useless in the mighty struggle to recapture science, one of the powers of Western culture for the kingdom of God. I don't know what you guys think about that. I don't know that we're ever going to be able to recapture science. Mm -hmm. um, I think that ship has sailed. I think uh, the... I mean, it'd be wonderful if... If the whole paradigm yeah, shifted, yeah, the paradigm for sure. But um, because of the darkness of men's hearts and the pride involved and the and the strong delusion that's been sent on so many, I think uh, I think the arguing will continue. But that's why I'm out because I don't have to argue anymore. All I have to do is present sure, what we're sure, finding. Sure. This speaks for itself. Um, but I th I think. People are going to remain. I mean, my personal view is that that opposition will always be here. Um, I don't think it's our responsibility to fight against it. Uh, I think that's a war the Holy Spirit fights. But um, and, and I believe in just testifying. That's why we yeah. print everything for free. We we do the work for folks. So they all they got to do is read the book. You can read it in 15 minutes. Either yeah. of them. And then just share it. Just it's give sure, it away. Sure, yeah. it, the book, I had a PhD tell me this is the best textbook I've ever seen on dinosaur soft tissue. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. And, and it's a kid's book. So, yeah. you know, it's easy to understand. But the, the truth is evident. You don't have to sugarcoat it. And you certainly don't have to throw your Bible out the window anymore. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Genesis is certain to be true. Mm -hmm. uh, this nails it. Um, and, and, so that's yeah. my position anyway. I'm sticking yeah. to it. Well, and, and I appreciate you sharing, Will, because there's this idea of, well, the paradigm, it, it just seems to have this inertia to it. Yes. Um, now, we could start, certainly start to feel hopeless. Um, and no, I don't, don't think, feel hopeless. But we can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, scripture tells us that to be confident and be firm. He who stays uh, firm to the end. So yeah, we, we will got to think about the end, you know, absolutely. and stay in firm. And absolutely. And, and I think that... Um, I, I, I like this quote in the, the effect that he's saying we want to be useful vessels in the kingdom. Yes. And I think he's trying to echo this idea mm -hmm. that what, what you are accomplishing, and I yes. say to the credit, maybe the shift, it won't shift entirely, but I think to be useful is we understand I'm not going to be ashamed of the Lord Jesus no. as it relates to any subject. Anything. And, and so um, I, I work with you know, homeschool students in uh, classical conversations, and, yeah. and they have this model of how um, all fields of knowledge tied together around the Lord Jesus. Yeah, they're all in can, subjection to him. Exactly. Yeah. And so I like to tell them that there's no subject that we're talking about where um, we shouldn't refer to the Lord in some way. Because yeah. uh, I think it was um, um, 
R.C. Sproul who said, to talk about any subject without referring to the Lord is is saying something about the Lord. Say he doesn't matter mm. yeah. about this That's subject. true. And, and I, I, I bring that up because mm. we're going to be useful vessels to take captive every thought, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Mm. We take captive every thought. We're taking dominion in the sense of, this area of knowledge, we want to show you. We're going to be faithful, yeah. and we're going to. You're investing. It may not be the whole majority, but it may be that five percent. But yeah. that five percent. Hopefully, it's more. Yeah. And you know, we don't want people, at least in this area, pushed around by every wind of doctrine. Yeah. And there are tons of wind blowing in this area, so we're kind of putting a stake in the ground uh, by publishing. Yeah. And, and I think that's the important that. step, is to build a publication history, a record. So that's what we've done. We've worked on our science, we got as good as we could at our science, and then we started publishing. And so there are many world firsts, which is fantastic, and we even won a journal cover for the yes. nerve issue, which is really humbling and honoring. Um, but the whole point is you, you're you on a, on a different plane at that point, because you're you're only presenting what is already accepted by the scientific community and published. So it, it should give people confidence that mm. this is peer-reviewed uh, science that is already in the scientific literature. Yeah. And, you know, who knows what kind of momentum could happen when you have a generation that has been invested in. Because mm -hmm. um, as I understand, you guys are going to continue to do excellent research um, yeah. as mm -hmm. as long as the Lord gives you. Well, we already have here. new discoveries, so stay uh, tuned. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm excited to hear more. <laughs> and you will continue, your, the goal is to continue these labs. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. hopefully we can continue building off of that and uh, getting more great content. And, and I, I think that's a, a beautiful vision because we don't know what where the Lord's going to take it. It's like that mustard seed. Yeah. Uh, I've seen students who already have that fire lit, and they yeah. haven't even done the labs yet. I know, right? <laughs> um, and, and now I see you, and I, I, I wanted to have this conversation um, to also um, discuss with you the vision and why this matters and, and kind of continue the previous conversation we had of a lot of people try to put out the fire and just say, well, well, partly the interesting thing is we see some people just, they go, well, I'm not going to read the research. And it's always kind of interesting. I um, People will expect us to read their material, but they don't read ours. And so it's like, well, what do we do? Well, we have to find people that will listen because some just won't. Yeah, and behind yeah. every person who says, I don't care about what you show me. I don't <laughs> yeah. care if you drag Noah's Ark off of Ararat in <laughs> yeah. live TV, okay? <laughs> yeah. There are five people behind that person who really right. want to know. Mm -hmm. So... I have often said to people, why are you here, number one, and do you realize you're not my target audience? Mm. And that's not being malicious, it's being direct about a person who needs to know, hey, you're a stick in the mud, and we don't have a lot of time to invest in folks three and four times hearing the gospel when a lot of people haven't heard it the first time. Mm. So, um, I don't, I don't, I will spend time with a person like that if they have a genuine heart and they really have genuine questions. But if they're just argumentative, not my target audience. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, my heart breaks for some who, yes. who wouldn't just come and look. Like, Correct. if they see what I see, and, and you know, uh, I was telling my wife last night, I said, you gotta see what, I, and she's like about to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you gotta see, I'm, I saw nerves, and nerves and premium bones. Uh, and then of course she said, you know, some people are gonna ask, well, how do you know the real dinosaurs? I'm just, and so I'm going to just throw out like, yeah. so they're very, the bones you went to the site and, and verified by the paleontologist. Yeah, right? we only yeah. dig at sites that are already characterized in the literature. Okay. We're yeah. not reinventing the wheel. We're following up on the work of others. So Dr. Schweitzer digs in the same places we dig, Dr. Horner, all these famous paleontologists were going to the same sites. And so, and the other thing we pointed out, particularly in the last paper, the Dimetrodon paper, which was just published last month, is that, especially with the clots, we went back in the literature and we looked at all the other scientific papers that deal with Cretaceous thin sections. Mm. When they thin section the bone, you can see the clots really clearly. And we looked at all their preparations and almost all of them had clots in them. 
Wow. See, and that was one of the most exciting things. But they didn't think about it. I mean, yeah. You know, they, they don't, don't talk about it. To it. Yeah, they they don't, don't refer to it. Uh, they don't even mention you know, it. They didn't think they should even look for it, right? I don't know. I don't know what they yeah. think, but okay. I know what they're not saying, and they're not saying these are clots. We're the only ones. And, and it's easy. All you have to do is put it under a UV autofluorescent microscope. Now, if you're a microscopist, you know exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. So it's not hard for these folks. Uh, they could verify, and that's what we suggested in our paper. We said... Their specimens simply await going under our microscope so we could verify that they are real clots because I believe they're clots. So they could do this work themselves. Uh, why they don't is up to them, but we're going to do it because it yeah. needs to be done. Well, and, and the, the published uh, reports of the clots, is that a first yeah. for you guys? Okay. Yeah, world first. World, that, and that's incredible, and that's mm -hmm. why um, everyone needs to be excited about this. Now, I think... Um, I, I've heard you describe it several times. I can't remember the exact medical term, but it's DIC is the yeah. abbreviation. Yeah. What is that? That stands for disseminated intravascular. So it's disseminated throughout the body. Okay. Intravascular, it's in your vascular system, which is your blood supply. Uh, coagulation, which we all know is blood clotting. When your yeah. blood coagulates, it's clotting. And you know, if you if you puncture your skin, your uh, your system responds right away with a clotting cascade. You you develop a scab. It's the body's way of protecting you from bleeding out. Well, it's a whole the whole cascade has been worked out, and there's all these different chemicals that start in this cascade and they just tumble like down the waterfall. So clotting can be uh, like a waterfall cascade mm -hmm. that ends in total clotting. And we see that in humans and in animals that die by asphyxiation in water. Wow. And so their blood completely clots in that condition. Now, if you're buried in the ground, all your outer skin is gonna, and organs, all that, they're all gonna decay away, but the bones are still there. The bones, mm -hmm. you know, 95% of the bones we dig out of these famous world digs are bone. Wow. They're not rock. Well, students aren't really taught that, are of course they? not. Okay, and they're taught not. they're per permineralized. Yeah, they're taught they're largely permineralized or turned into rock. Uh, they are modified. Well, they've been in the ground for a long, yeah, long time. Of course. But um, the question is, how long? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that's where the soft tissue comes in. That's kind of a, uh, a measure because we know that a lot of these tissues through forensics, we know they decay very quickly. We, we would have expect everybody was shocked because they expected these bones to be dry and dusty. But yeah. when they cracked them open, they found, oh, wow, what's that? Oh, and they repeated the experiment multiple times because they couldn't believe their results. Yeah. Well, and this is, of course, this is a picture in uh, Old Stretchy Dinosaur Bone Cell in the Red Book. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from the video that went viral. Yes. Um, yeah. And that was from the Triceratops horn, that yes. red stretchy stuff. No, it shocked me. And I was trained in this kind of processing. So I don't know why this stuff is still here. God did brag about dinosaurs, didn't he? Bragged yeah, about Joe. their bones. He said they're like brass. Yeah. So that's a clue. Yeah. yeah. He gave us a clue there. But other than that, I can't explain why this is there. But it's in abundance. Well, and this is so incredible to see. And I was... Um, Texting several people last night um, after my wife fell asleep, and uh, and I was like, well, some I need to tell some other people who weren't there, and um, and so I texted someone and I said, it's definitely it definitely was a moment of worship, yeah. and, and that's that's part of what I, I want all believers to understand as well is um, this is not just oh the science nerd type I didn't get a science degree I'm working on my MDiv in apologetics, yeah. um, and it I was hooked. With creation science, first through guys like Tim Clary, I understood mega sequences in the yes. flood. And then I said, oh, I live around a mountain in El Paso. So everywhere I look, I'm thinking of the Lord's judgment and yes. his mercy. Yeah. And, and so then that set, it opened up like everything. I see it through a new lens. And so then it started applying to other fields of science. His mercy is unbelievable. Yeah, He's the morning. nicest guy in the whole universe, you know, and he died for me. When I didn't know what I was doing, when I hated him, it says he yeah. died for me. So it is a matter of worship. Yeah. God is a God uh, whose judgment is fierce. It's evident in the flood. This cellophane wrapped earth of soft tissue that we're walking on, and we intend, we intend to dig all around the earth in the Cretaceous mm -hmm. and show that this envelops the entire earth. It is, it is a 
moment of worship when you realize the severity of the judgment and the destruction. His mercy is infinite, but it's on a time clock. Yeah. And that that time seems to be winding down to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if COVID wasn't a, a bowl of, gra of wrath, I don't know what could yeah. be. I've never experienced one like that. Yeah. We lost a hundred, you know, nine hundred thousand people in this country. Yeah, that's got to wake you up a little bit. Yeah, and and you mentioned how you're going to keep digging, so I know that yeah. um, the the labs, the research, yes. which is um, involved with the digs, and Keith and Ruth, have you guys both been on digs as well? Or yeah, yeah, Ruth's been uh, to Montana. I haven't been to Montana. Yeah, that's I caught exciting. the COVID yeah. on the last Montana dig, but <laughs> yeah. I did go to Oklahoma and mm -hmm. and uh, helped with recovering the. Uh, Dimetrodon yes. really? material. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. You, you know, and I, I, I think it's we're such a, an exciting time of research mm -hmm. with yourself and Dr. Snelling is one of my heroes. So if he's watching, you can come <laughs> on my show any day. Um, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Armitage as well. And I just I'm just honored to have y'all. Is is we think about um, the the research going on um, that many times people. Uh, we think of a mission trip going somewhere in evangelism, and we should do that. Don't yeah. mishear me. Yeah. But I think of a dinosaur dig and evangelism, mm -hmm. people don't tend to pair that together. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I do, in my yeah. mind. Yes. Um, we're going to the Grand Canyon later this May, Lord willing. Same thing. Um, yeah. And we're going to see evidence for the flood and do evangelism. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's why I think we have to, as believers in the church, if we, to strengthen the church is our goal. I think we're in common on mm -hmm. that goal. Um, to strengthen the body of Christ, we need to understand this is such an opportunity. And and so one of the last things I want to hit on is is that that area that people try to put out to the fire and the passion go. Um, well, of course they they want to dismiss with um, ad hominems and we're. Uh, but beyond that, um, we have people saying, well, it it it. It might have lasted millions of years because of what we call the iron preservation hypothesis. Yes. And I know last episode we mentioned Dr. Center and um, your grace just to respond to some of those. And uh, now some of your presentations this week, you, you unpack some of the iron hypothesis. Yeah. And um, if you could it basically explain some of that and sure. how that connects with some of your research okay. uh, and, and what, how are we, what are we supposed to make of all that? Well, the problem... Uh, for the folks that did the original uh, dinosaur soft tissue work is uh, they did it so carefully that they pointed that they painted themselves in a corner uh, they found exquisite examples of soft tissue even down into the nucleus that they, they found uh, uh, DNA wrapping proteins called histones mm. that's in the nucleolus of the nucleus so their efforts to find some of the most elusive tissues that go back to the original dinosaur were remarkable. But there was no, re no, uh, no mechanism proposed. Mm. So there was a flurry of activity shortly after, well, for a little time after uh, the, uh, the original papers were published by Dr. Schweitzer and others. Uh, but they, they seemed to hurriedly do an experiment to prove a concept that they were floating uh, which is that iron in the blood hmm. escaped after the animal died and filtered through the bone and preserved all the tissues hmm. in the bone by causing them to crinkle up a little bit. Uh, iron is highly oxidative. All you got to do is go to Detroit in the winter and look at bumpers up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there may not be many steel bumpers, but there's a lot of rust up there in the winter. Hmm. That's what this blood turns into iron oxide. So it's highly oxidative, it'll chew up. If it chews up a bumper, what's it gonna do to your tissue? But the thinking is that these fentanyl reactions created hydroxyl ions, ions and peroxyl ions, and these went in and crinkled up the tissue a little bit and preserved it over deep time. Well, what people don't realize is at the beginning of the experiment where they used the blood, that they were gonna soak these ostrich vessels in. They took bird vessels, ostrich mm. vessels, and they took uh, emu and chicken blood. And the first thing they did was inject it with an anticoagulant. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Yes, it is. <laughs> I don't, I can't imagine dinosaurs falling on needles full of anticoagulant syringes, you know, in the, in the Jurassic and being injected with an anticoagulant, would, which would prevent the blood from clotting. 
Yeah. So they had to have the blood not clot. Not only did they use an anticoagulant to prevent the clotting, but they started spinning it down in high-speed centrifuges. They took out all the platelets, all the red blood cells. They actually had to bust open the red blood cells on ice. They used mechanical mm. uh, abrasion to break open the red blood cells and expose the hemoglobin from which they hope the heme comes. Anyway, it's this long, laborious... Uh, uh, experiment which had nothing to do with the conditions at the Hell Creek. Hmm. Okay. That seems like basic science 101. Well, I call it a 10th grade science experiment at the time. <laughs> yeah. The second experiment they did, they gave up on blood altogether in this experiment and they just took iron oxide off the chemistry lab shelf and threw it in. So, yeah, it's, it's the mechanism is supposed to only preserve vessels. That's all they worked on. It doesn't explain osteocytes and their beautiful philopodia, which yeah. are often 15, 20 microns long, almost longer than the cell, is the little thread foot that comes off of it at 200 nanometers thin. This is incredibly small. If Fenton reactions had been working, all of those philopodia would be chewed up. Wow. We showed in our latest, one of our latest papers, a beautiful philopodia with no erosion on it whatsoever. 200 nanometers the whole length. So we're not seeing the chemical signatures if the Fenton reactions had been active. And moreover, all they did was explain vessels with it, or attempt to explain. Nothing about osteocytes, nothing about veins, uh, nothing about vein valves. Nothing about nerves, nothing about lipids. I'm finding lipids, that's fat, okay? Mm. I'm finding lipids in the Permian. The, 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 uh, the nerves that you looked at last night, I have another yep. slide with me, and you'll get to see these lipid droplets being squeezed out. They, they, they got you know frozen in the permanent uh, preparation I made, the plastic, I used a liquid plastic to put these tissues in, but you can see a trail of lipids coming out of the nerve. So how can you pour out a bottle of Wesson oil on the Permian and come back in 290 million years and find Wesson oil? Come on, no. that's not science. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me that's science. Uh, so no, this stuff has to be young. Everything shows it's young. Uh, I think the deeper we dig, the more world first we're going to find. Yeah. As I mentioned, we've already got some other discoveries that we have not disclosed that I think will be even more shocking yeah. than what you've seen. So no, full speed ahead, right? Uh, we want everybody to know this. We want to share it with as many people as we can. We're take, we'll take the lab anywhere in the country. We have uh, invitations. And by the way, if you're a homeschool coordinator, contact us because we come in uh, at the invitation of the homeschool and we provide this STEM content. This is world-class, cutting edge STEM STEM content, right? Yeah. Science, technology, engineering, math. That's what everybody wants taught right now. So we're delivering that, but we're also delivering a message of hope, yeah. of healing through this bowl of wrath that we just went th through and hang on to the word of God. That's your anchor. So that's that's really our our MO. That's what we're trying to do. Man. Yeah. And that's an explan ex explanation on that, on that whole topic. I think that'll serve our listeners Good. and viewers yeah. well. And you know that scripture says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Amen. He does. And he shows up. If you jump off the cliff for him, he will show up. Yeah. I guarantee you. He'll always be faithful, even if mm -hmm. we are not. Amen. And, and that's the comfort. And that's yeah. the end goal. I ask students uh, many times, what's the end goal of education? Mm -hmm. And some people say to get a job, um, to learn about this topic. So the end goal, the ultimate goal, is to worship the Lord Jesus. Yeah, amen. Reflect Him. Yes. Yeah. And and so I, I appreciate all three of you, Ruth, Thank you. Dr. Armitage, and Keith, because uh, I, I see that, and I, I understand that is your end goal in all of this research. So amen. thank you for your service to the body of Christ and to um, the field of science. Thank you. Uh, the Pray Lord for us. We honored. need a lot of prayer. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I just want to thank you again for your time and coming back on the Engage Truth Show and, and here in El Paso. Um, I know when this is posted later, I'll be looking back and, it, and enjoying our time here. <laughs> we and, too. We and, will uh, as well. And I hope all our viewers and listeners will uh, just like and subscribe and share this. Amen. It just helps get the message out and go to district.org Org. Org. Yeah. Um, and, and check out D-S-T-R-I. D-S-T-R-I. Very good. I have to repeat it because people forget it. D-S-T-R-I dot org. Everything's free. The books are free. The papers are free. The videos are free. We'll come for free. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Um, and share with more people so Amen. they can engage with the truth.